Guten Tag, alle Herr Wallis hier. Today we're going to look at irregular verbs or unregelmäßige Verben in German. So we're going to look at three categories of these verbs and although this is not a complete list it will give you a good idea of how irregular verbs operate in general. So we're going to look at three different categories as I said based upon the ways in which the verb changes from the, th the third person singular to the third person singular past, so from the present to the past in the third person singular, and then also looking at the um, past participles. So let's start by just introducing ourselves to these verbs. Essen, which is to eat. Fressen, which is uh, a German verb for to eat or to devour, used primarily with an animals. Geben, to give. Sein, to be. Sitzen, to be sitting. Treten, to step or to kick, and vergessen, to forget. And these um, seven verbs here all follow the E-A-A pattern, and you'll see what I mean here in a minute. Our next pattern that we're going to look at, um, the E and O to A to O pattern. So we're going to start by just looking at these verbs. Um, you have beginnen, to begin, brechen, to break, erschrechen, to frighten, get Gelten, to be valid, gewinnen, to win, helfen, to help, nehmen, to take, schwimmen, to swim, sprechen, to speak, sterben, to die, treffen, to meet, werfen, to throw, and kommen, to come. And our final uh, group or category we're going to look at are verbs that follow this pattern, changing from to an I in the third person singular, staying an I in many cases, changing to an A in the third person singular past, and then a U in the past participle. So these are binden to tie, finden to find, klingen to ring, schwingen to swing, singen to sing, sinken to sink, springen to jump, stinken to stink, trinken to drink, verschwinden to disappear, and swingen to force. Now in most cases in the present perfect tense or perfect in German, um, you're going to use a helping verb and in most cases that helping verb is haben. For example, ich habe einen Hamburger gegessen or uh, du hast mir das Buch gegeben. But for some verbs uh, they will use sein as a helping verb and we have a whole uh, selection of videos over this on our website which you can look at. But going at this list here let's identify which ones would use sein as that's going to become important later on so sein itself always uses itself as a helping verb treten schwimmen sterben kommen sinken springen and verschwinden and i'll show you what this means uh, more so as we move along okay so when do you use haben or sein as a helping verb so here we go. Rule number one, if a verb is an intransitive verb, meaning that it takes no direct object and clearly shows motion from one location to another, you'll use a form of sein as a helping verb. Um, here's some examples with the verb spielen, which uses haben as a helping verb, ich habe Fußball gespielt, and the way to think of that is you could be playing, but you could be sitting still. So the verb itself doesn't clearly show motion from one place to another. For example, you could be playing cards and sitting at a table. However, gehen, when you're saying you're going somewhere, that clearly indicates that you're moving from one place to another. So we're going to use sein as a helping verb. So you wouldn't say, ich habe zur Schule gegangen. You would have to say, ich bin or du bist or er ist zur Schule gegangen. Uh, the second rule here, if the verb is an intransitive verb and it indicates a change in the state of being, Verbs like disappearing, uh, growing, dying, um, sinking, these are ones that do that. And here's some examples. Er ist gestorben, he has died. Er ist verschwunden, he has disappeared. So both of these indicate a change in state. Okay, so what we're going to do now is show how these uh, irregular verbs change in the third person singular present tense. So. For example, if you want to say, he is eating an apple, er ist einen Apfel. The dog is eating the food, der Hund frisst das Futter. Sie gibt ihm das Buch, er ist nicht mein Freund. Sie sitzt in dem Stuhl, er tritt den Ball, sie vergisst die Antwort. 
for our second category. Er beginnt das Spiel, sie bricht mein Herz, er erschricht mich, das gilt nicht. Sie gewinnt das Spiel, er hilft uns, sie nimmt das, er schwimmt ans Ufer, sie spricht Deutsch, er stirbt, sie trifft uns dort, er wirft uns den Ball, sie kommt nicht. And in our last category, er bindet die Bänder oder Schuhbänder, sie findet das Buch, das klingt gut, sie schwingt hin und her, er singt gut, das Boot singt schnell, er springt hoch, das stinkt jetzt, er trinkt Wasser, sie verschwindet jeden Tag und er zwingt uns, ihm zu helfen. So, in all of these cases, we are just using uh, the verb in the third person singular in the present tense and showing how the commonalities of how they form that conjugation. So, let's look at this in the past tense. So, in our first uh, group, it's changing to an A in the past tense. Er aß den, den Apfel, der Hund fraß das Futter, sie gab ihm das Buch, er war nicht mein Freund, sie saß in dem Stuhl, er trat den Ball, sie vergaß die Antwort. For our next group, er begann das Spiel, sie brach mein Herz, er erschrach mich, das galt nicht, sie gewann das Spiel, er half uns, Sie nahm das, er schwamm ans Ufer, sie sprach Deutsch, er starb, sie traf, er warf, sie kam. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention about uh, schwimmen, the verb schwimmen, um, it also can use haben as a helping verb. If you say for how long you have swa uh, swum, swam, then you would use haben as a helping verb. For example, ich habe zwei Stunden geschwommen. But if you were saying where you were swimming to, in other words, giving it direction, you're going to use sein. So, er ist ans Ufer geschwommen. Just a little side note there. And then our last group. Er band die Schuhbände. Sie fand das Buch. Das klang gut. Sie schwang hin und her. Er sang gut. Das Boot sang schnell. Er sprang hoch. Das stank jetzt. Er trank das Wasser. Sie verschwand jeden Tag und er zwang uns, ihm zu helfen. So, again, we are looking at the third person singular in the simple past. And one note about the simple past in German, it's more likely to be written than said, although with modal verbs, for example, and certain verbs in German, you will hear the simple past form quite frequently. For example, va. Okay, now let's look at the past participles of these verbs. In other words, uh, how it is formed using the perfect tense. So for essen, we have gegessen, fressen, gefressen. So the equivalent is essen is to eat, gegessen is eaten. So I have eaten, ich habe gegessen. Uh, er, er hat, der Hund hat gefressen, gegeben, gewesen. Remember, we're going to use sein with that. So sein is to be, gewesen would translate as bin. So, he has been, in German, is er ist gewesen, not er hat gewesen. Uh, gesessen, getreten, because you, are, um, you can use this also uh, when you're using it in the form of to step into something. When you're stepping, for example, in the room, er ist in Zimmer getreten, which means he has stepped into the room, so he's clearly moving, so therefore it's sein. Vergessen. Okay, for our next group, begonnen, here we're look changing to an O, brechen, gebrochen, erschrecken, erschrochen, gelten, gegolten, gewinnen, gewonnen, helfen, geholfen, nehmen, genommen, schwimmen, geschwommen, sprechen, gesprochen, sterben, gestorben, treffen, getroffen, werfen, geworfen, kommen, gekommen. In our last group, is going to a U, so binden, gebunden, finden, gefunden, klingen, geklungen, schwingen, geschwungen, singen, gesungen, sinken, gesunken, springen, gesprungen, stinken, gestunken, trinken, getrunken, verschwinden, verschwunden, und zwingen, gezwungen. So these are how they change. And remember the ones who use sign, 
Uh, so make a note of that when you're forming the perfect tense with those verbs. And here they are again. Okay, so ich, das war's. Vielen Dank für das Zuschauen. Auf Wiedersehen.